Ja. Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. And welcome to all those in attendance for today's webinar. My name is Taylor and I am an analyst here at Beyond 20 and today I'm joined by my colleague Andy Rivers. Um, today's webinar topic is on how Idle, Agile, and DevOps can fit together to drive innovation in your organization. We'll start off by giving a brief introduction of each of these frameworks discuss how they can fit together, and then dive into some of the common challenges we see when organizations attempt to implement them together. We'll also be answering any questions you may have along the way. Uh, having said that, please feel free to ask questions as they arise in the chat box provided. Before we get started, uh, just wanna make sure that you all can hear me and can see the presentation, as well as uh, get an idea as to who is out there on the webinar today. In the chat box, please indicate uh, who you are and whether or not you can see our presentation and hear us as well. Great, looks like everything is up and running smoothly, so we'll go ahead and get started. First off, we wanna just start with a little bit of background about Beyond 20. Beyond 20, here at Beyond 20, we're an IT consulting firm, and we provide a wide range of services from idle assessments and training to ITSM process design and strategic planning workshops. All of our certified training, trainers are also consultants um, working in and outside of the classroom to implement these methodologies within organizations like yours. Our idle scrum master and DevOps fundamentals classes are actually some of our most popular and demanded offerings. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about these services, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to us after this presentation. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm joined today by my colleague, Andy Rivers. Um, Andy is a senior advisor here at Beyond 20 uh, who came to us from the University of Tennessee. He's been with us for the past three, three, four years. Um, he's a certified idle expert, um, also certified scrum master and has a wide range of certifications in security, IT security. Um, he was the former ACIO at the University of Tennessee. Um, and also uh, from what I hear, he's a reluctant runner, but I also hear he's also pretty involved um, in his kids' uh, athletic endeavors as well. Yeah, thanks, Taylor. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, definitely getting involved there. Chasing the chasing and chauffeuring the little ones around is probably how I spend most of my weekends. So uh, <laughs> the things you do is you get older and you have little ones. So it's a good good time spent. So uh, well, thanks for the introduction. Um, thanks everyone for attending. Uh, we got a lot of content to cover today. Uh, judging by the numbers today, it seems like we had a lot of people interested in this one, which is great. That's one of the things we hope we're doing is providing information out there that is useful for everybody um, and can, can help you do your jobs better uh, and uh, kind of move yourself forward a little bit as well. So today, as uh, Taylor mentioned, uh, I'm going to start out just talking through what are the three things? You know, what is ITIL? What is Agile? What is DevOps? So that we kind of have have that same understanding and then we'll go through okay how do they fit together and then maybe more importantly what are some of the common challenges that come up um, whenever you start talking about all three of these especially if you're talking about all three of them and trying to roll them out and and just how do they actually all work together uh, then we'll do a little bit of a recap and then we'll do some questions so um, as we go through if we can, we'll try to answer questions as we go, but that's not always possible. So please put your questions in the, the chat box. Um, if, if we don't immediately get a response, then, then know that we're going to answer them at the end. So, uh, and then always, if we somehow have great conversations and it takes too long, we'll follow up with you in email as well. So, but please uh, go ahead and ask those questions as you go, and we'll definitely tackle them uh, throughout the webinar here. So, so what we're going to start out with here, so the, the reference here may be uh, too old for some of you here. I'm, I'm not sure Taylor may not get this one, so I'll pick on her. So, But we're just going to start out with, uh, with just the facts. So what are just the facts for this one? So whenever we talk about the three here, so when we talk about, uh, we'll call them the big three. So we talk about ITIL, Agile, and DevOps. 
you know, what's the difference in those? And so if I just really break it down in the most basic level, the way you can look at this is ITIL is a best practice framework for running IT. So what is best practice for running IT? How do we deliver services? How do we deliver value back to the business? How do we do that as an IT organization? Agile and DevOps are really around how do we get things done? There are methodologies for us getting work done. And so hopefully getting that work done creates more value for the business. Um, it, it allows us to do more for the business. But really, if we think about this and we break them down, sort of the difference between them is, you know, ITIL is really that, that best practice framework and Agile and DevOps are ways for us to get work done. So let's kind of unpack each one of these a little bit. Depending on your background, some of this, you know, may be more of a refresher on some of these topics than others, and some of it may be new, but it's good to make sure we all have the same foundation. So what is ITIL? So ITIL is the, the IT infrastructure library. So it's a library of best practices for running IT. So um, it covers, you know, 26 processes from, you know, how do we handle things when they're broken with incident management? How do we handle changes in our environment for change management? You know, all the way to how do we deal relationships with our customers for business relationship management? So it really covers that wide range of processes that we need to uh, incorporate into our, our sort of day to day of how we deliver IT services. Um, when we talk about ITIL, one of the things to, to focus on is that, that ITIL is the set of books. It teaches us to do IT service management. So really the principle that we're applying whenever we talk about doing ITIL is we're doing IT service management. And what we'll talk about is how that principle of IT service management works very well with, with DevOps and Agile. Like it, it, they are not opposing things. Uh, I think, you know, even as the title of, the, of our webinar went, they're peas and carrots. They go very well together. So you don't have to worry that you're going to do one or the other um, as you roll these out. So, you know, some of the things that makes ITIL successful is that it's best practice, um, it's non-prescriptive. And so that's a really big key when we start talking about how do these things fit together. Uh, when we talk about it being non-prescriptive, we talk about being a framework, that means it, it's, mean it's not a standard. It's not gonna say thou shall do the following 10 things and you have to do them exactly like this. No, it really says, hey, for IT, you're doing these types of things. Here's the best practice for doing those. And then you look at those and you adopt what makes sense for your environment. What it really provides us, so the real value in IT service management, is this business and IT alignment. Are we aligned with the business? So one of the things to recognize is that, that IT doesn't exist to do IT. IT exists to support the business. If the business goes away, IT goes away. They don't, they don't need a bunch of servers in a data center if there's nobody using them. If the, if the business goes away, then, then there's nothing for IT to do. So we need to make sure we're aligned with the business and delivering that value back to them. And that value may be some of these other things on this bullet point here, you know, uh, helping them get, you know, regulatory and statutory compliance. So maybe you're, you know, a new company and you're saying, hey, we decided we're going to start taking credit card payments. Well, now you got to get PCI compliance. So that's part of us getting IT getting aligned with the business. Business wants to be able to take credit card payments. We now need to meet that regulatory compliance or that, that sort of uh, the compliance out there with PCI. So. When we talk about business IT alignment, that's really what service management gives us. It gives us that, that framework to be able to, to deliver that um, and execute on that. ITIL, the way it's structured, is structured around this idea of five life cycles. So we have service strategy, service design, service transition, service operations, and continual service improvement. And so strategy is where we talk about why do we even do this? Why are we even offering this as a service? And, and that why should map back to a business outcome. So, you know, we're doing this to directly support this for the business. That's the type of things that we do in strategy. Design is where we talk about how are we actually going to do this? How are we going to build it? How are we going to roll it out? How are we going to support it? All those things that go around how. Transition is where we actually roll things out in our environment. How do we, how do we go from design to building it, to rolling it out, to testing it, um, to eventually handing it over to operations? And so service operations is where we deliver that day-to-day -day, um, value back to the business. And then we have that idea of continual service improvement where we just want to keep getting better because if we're not getting better, we're getting worse. So that's sort of a, you know, a two minute overview of ITIL. So, so again, you're, you're not ready to pass your foundations test after that one, but I kind of wanted to make sure we have a, a basic understanding of it. So let's talk a little bit about Agile. So again, Agile, you can kind of think of, this is a way to get things done. And so when we think about how we used to do projects before we really kind of started taking an agile approach was we, we would do step by step. We'd analyze it, we'd plan, we'd design, we would build, we'd test and deploy. So, you know, sometimes that would take six, eight months. So by the time sometimes we rolled it out to the business, they're like, man, we don't even, 
we don't even need what you planned or you're so far off we can't use what you did. And so there was a big gap in there that, that we didn't always meet what the business wanted and needed. So the idea of Agile is, okay, how do we work that we, we meet more closely to what the business needs? So one of these things is, is let's, let's shrink this time window down. Let's shrink this down and we're going to analyze, we're going to plan, we're going to build, test, and deploy. And we're going to do that on a lot quicker cadence. We're going to do it for smaller increments. And we're also going to touch base with the business more often instead of just disappearing for six to eight months and come back and going, ta-da, here you go. Um, we're going to have a more active involvement and conversation with the customers along the way. So we sort of take the idea of a waterfall approach where we went step by step. You know, you may even look at this and sort of visualize a Gantt chart in your head. All right, well, we're going to do requirements for this two weeks. We're going to analyze and we're going to design. And, you know, one of the things that also happens in this, so, so we've stretched out that time window. But the other thing to recognize, and this is where waterfall falls down sometimes, is we may have green lights all along the way. Yeah, we've got our system requirements on. We're doing some analysis. That may be so green that we're going to have this project done, but it doesn't always indicate that's actually going to be a healthy project. Yeah, just because we got requirements gathered in the two weeks we were supposed to doesn't always equate to, yes, we're going to deliver it in eight months. So it, it was really hard to match to, you know, are we even on track? Are we going to deliver what they want? And it, is it going to deliver on time, on budget, those types of things? So what we try to do is now look at this Agile. And so one of the things I wanna do is kind of talk about Scrum. It's one of the most common um, Agile uh, methodologies or ways to adopt it. So the idea is you take, okay, what are our requirements? That's sort of our backlog. And we're saying, okay, we have all these requirements that the business needs for us. Let's start breaking those out. And we're gonna put them into some time increments. So we're gonna say, you know, between one to two weeks, these are the things that we can get done. And so the typical, or one to four weeks, the typical um, cadence that most people do or the most sprint durations is two weeks. That seems to be a good, uh, for most environments, that's a good window um, between planning and executing the sprint versus, um, you know, having to do it just constantly over and over again. So a lot of places choose two weeks. But basically what we're saying is, okay, from all of these things the business wants from us, we're going to do these things in this two weeks. And one of the keys to that is, those things that we're pulling off from the backlog, that's an active conversation with our customers back and forth to say, what are the most important things for you that you need done? And so we're, we're shortening that window again. And so then when we do our, we do our work, um, we, we do some things like have a daily meeting where we talk about, okay, where you at, what you block, what do you need to get done? So we are just driving that through to completion and we're doing it with much shorter increments um, with the goal of getting shippable, workable things out to the customer as quick as possible. Now, when we talk about um, Agile, you know, a lot of it comes around from the, the Agile manifesto. And so we kind of got it pulled up here on the screen. Uh, some of the things to note is that, that it's laid out where they value the things on the left over the things on the right. So we value individuals and interactions over process and tools. Now, what it's not saying is you don't do processes. It's just saying we value these things over. So, you know, if we were compared with two options where one ends with, you know, an eight page workflow diagram and 10 pages of, you know, a racy chart versus, hey, let's go more high level and have more interactions with our customers along the way. They're saying we value that more on the left. And so one of the things that we don't want to do is also paint the picture that 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 Agile has now said, we don't follow any process. We just meet with them and go there. no. We still follow, we still have structure. We're just saying we value these things over on the left over the things on the right. So that kind of gives us the, the two to three minute primer on, on Agile. So let's talk a little bit about DevOps now. So DevOps probably the, the newest concept that most of us are dealing with because ITIL has been around since the 80s. Agile has been around for a while. Some of us may be just now adopting Agile, but, but it's a little bit newer than, than uh, the concepts around ITIL. And then I'd say DevOps is probably the newest of the three. So one of the things with, with DevOps is you know, kind of describe it a little bit more of as a philosophy. It's not necessarily a methodology. There's no, um, you know, the PMBOK uh, for project management. That's sort of their best practice body. You know, Agile even has the Agile manifesto. You know, we think about IT service management. They have the, the IT infrastructure library. They have these these sort of bodies of knowledge around that. Right now, DevOps is still more of, you know, that philosophy of the things that we want to do. It's a little bit more of, hey, how are you going to define it for your organization? So, you know, one of the things we talk about is the big thing with DevOps is 
you're you're trying to remove those those silos, remove those things between development and operation. So so I know it's happened to me in my career. I, I would guess it's happened to many of you on on the uh, on the webinar here today that that you would see things developed and then they're just kind of thrown over the fence to operations. Hey, we did it. It's done. Now you you deal with it on a day to day basis. And, and there's not necessarily malicious intent involved in that. It's just like, hey, development got it done. They now got to get their next project done. They're just cranking through their list and operations is sitting there going, oh, man, we got to support it day in and day out. And so the idea of, of DevOps is, OK, how do we how do we get rid of that development versus operations? How do we get them working together so that not only are we cranking through development, but we're able to use it day in and day out so you know providing that integration between development operations that they're collaborating that that we're automating everything we possibly can and that that we're measuring so we know hey are we getting better are we getting worse just ingraining that in the way that you do work that's what we're really trying to do with with devops and so you know it's sort of the idea of you know down with the silos that that you don't want to just throw the grenade over the wall hey we're done there you go push it and prod it's now yours you know we want to get away from that we kind of want to get away from that throwing it over at the fence at the end but we also want to start getting operations involved earlier in the beginning to say hey how are we going to support this thing once it is live how are we going to be able to you know roll it out to our users you know what can we do now and build in from the beginning that that we can automate or give tools to the service desk so that they can quickly solve things without even having to escalate it to us so a lot of that's talking about removing some of the bottlenecks that could pop up there. So, you know, what are those bottlenecks between going from dev to operations? How do we get operations involved, you know, earlier on to have these things run smoother as we develop and as we roll them out in our environment? So, so some of the key principles that, that come along with DevOps are, you know, you want to develop and test against, you know, production like uh, principles. So that's just saying that, um, well, I'll give you if you don't do this. And so, again, I, I've lived through this where, where we developed and then we went to actually roll it out and it didn't work. It erred. We had issues. And a lot of it came down to our, our environment that we developed on and build, test, all that sort of stuff was different than our production. And so then we had issues with it. So how do we how do we remove that as a barrier so that we're we're working and developing in environments like our production? So that's not a hurdle for us to run into later. You know, and how do we do this where it's repeatable and reliable processes? Because you can't automate things when it's ad hoc every time. I mean, if it's ad hoc every time, you can't do automation around it. And you're always relying on those few individuals that have the institutional knowledge to be able to do that. So how do we how do we get out of that? How do we break that mold? And, you know, make sure that, that our quality is there, that we're not just rolling things out and having a lot of issues. Um, and then this last one, let's talk about amplifying the feedback loop. So are we actually getting feedback from from operations back to development and actually doing things about it or you know is, is operations just grumbling about we don't know how to support any of this and dev sitting there going i don't know why they keep sending us all these tickets you know how do we get those feedback loops in place not only have them in place but have them happen very quickly and have reaction uh, and resolve these things as they come up part of this is also the concept of the shift left so we're trying to get you know more operational concerns farther over to the left. So not only are we, we're not just concerned about operations when it goes in the prod, but you know, we start all the way back in development as we're building things, are we unit testing, are we doing them in our test environment, are we talking about how we're gonna support it all the way to our staging, and then in production, we're smooth sailing by then if we've done this well. So again, that was sort of our, our two to three minute primer on DevOps. So again, it's not uh, not comprehensive there. So if those are you want to go deeper in each one of those, please reach out to us and we can kind of give you a you know, deeper analysis on those. But we wanted to make sure we kind of had some fundamental knowledge for as we go forward and talk through some of the rest of these concepts. So when we talk through how do they fit together? When we talk about how do they fit together, I'm going to use ITIL, the ITIL framework, as sort of our foundation. That That's going to be our basis for comparison. One is that it's comprehensive, that it has all, you know, sort of the, the best practice processes for running IT. It's also the one that's been around the longest. So it's probably the one that your organization hopefully is doing it or has at least tried to do it. So there's, there's probably more familiarity around, um, you know, ITIL and those types of things. So that's going to be the one. That sort of I use as our basis for comparison of, of how these things fit together. So one of the areas we're going to start with when we talk about um, from ITIL and how these things fit together, one of the very first areas where these things start fitting together is, is within service transition. And so service transition is where we're rolling things out in our environment. This is where we're getting things out 
um, to our user base. We're getting them out into our environment. So these are, if we're taking the ITIL terms, this is where we're talking about change management, release and deployment, um, you know, asset configuration management, what do we have, how does it relate to each other, knowledge management, how do we support it? So all these things about getting it out into our environment. So that has a very natural overlap with DevOps and Agile because they're things of how do we get things done? And so this is where we're rolling things out in our environment. So there's a very you know, natural sort of overlap between this when we talk about um, ITIL, Agile, and DevOps. So <clears throat> let's talk about some, some examples here of how they fit together. And there may be a few of you, as soon as you saw this slide, you may have just rolled your eyes and went, oh, no, he's going he's gonna to process this to death. You know, there's process galore. That's what we didn't want. Okay, let's talk about what's on the screen. Let's also talk about, you know, what does what ITIL talk about? So what this is, what this diagram is showing us is, it's an example of how change management and release and deployment work together. So it shows us, you know, the four phases of release and deployment. It shows us change management, authorizing things at the top. If we think about this, what this is telling us is like, here's best practice for the things that you should be doing as you roll out changes in your environment. We should approve them so that everyone knows what they are. We need to do some planning. We need to build, build and test it. We then need to deploy it. And then we need to close it out. These concepts go across all the ones we've talked about. So it goes across Agile. It goes across DevOps. All those things can be done within this because you think about you know it talks about you know doing our planning that's what we do with with agile we talk about scrum we do sprint planning well we're going to plan our sprint we're going to build and we're going to test within our sprint we're going to roll it out then we're going to say hey okay we're going to close out our sprint we're going to do a sprint retro and talk about okay what are our lessons learned what went well and then we're just going to go back in that loop so so itil says you should do these things but it doesn't restrict you to like, hey, the thing on the screen here needs to be a six month process. You can do all these activities within your two week sprint. And so you're still incorporating that best practice, but you're using these other methodologies to get work done. You know, matching this to DevOps. When it talks about, you know, step two is that release, build and test. DevOps is saying, hey, whenever you do that, you should do that on production like environments so that whenever we go over to deployment, it's actually going to work. We know it'll work. So, so you, you start marrying these things together in how you get the work done, but you still look at, uh, you know, ITIL is that best practice, you know, it's recommendation of saying, hey, best practice, if you're rolling these things out in your environment, these are the types of things you should do. So we evaluate them for best practice. Then we look at these other methodologies for how we get things done to see how can we provide the most value back to our business. So Agile is going to speed this up. DevOps is going to speed this up. And so we do all these concepts just a whole lot faster and more integrated and hopefully automating a lot of these things. So some of the things you can think about is, all right, so we're getting these things off the assembly line. So we're, we're cranking through our assembly line. We're rolling through some things. Um, you know, one of the things that, that, that should go well, if we start doing Agile well, or we start doing DevOps, it does really start running in this automated type format that we know what we're having. We're able to push things. We're developing against product-like environments, so we're not running unexpected issues. So all these things flow really well. Now, some things we have to consider is we have to make sure that we, not only are we cranking these things out on the assembly line, but do we know how to support them when they're done? So are we just cranking things off the line or are we also cranking them off the line and making sure we know how to support them when they're done? That's where a lot of the DevOps things come in at. The, hey, you know, we've, we've cranked through prod, we were cranked through development, we got this out, and all of a sudden we threw it over the fence, and now we're sort of, you know, your service desk is the mechanic staring at the engine going, huh, well, that's weird, I've never seen this before. You know, they're trying to figure it out as they go. That's exactly what DevOps is trying to prevent us from doing. How do we involve, in this case, how do you get the mechanic involved early on so they know and maybe even provide input of like, hey, maybe you should build the engine this way or put the bolts on this side because it'll be easier for us to support. It's a whole lot quicker. Um, you know, I've had, uh, for those of you that worked on your own cars, I'm sure you've had this, but I had an old truck that, that seven of the eight spark plugs were really easy to get to. That eighth one spent about four hours getting to. And that's one of the ones you're like, man, I wish that one of the mechanics had been in the room just to be like, hey, just don't put that plate right there. Just don't move it over about an inch. You'll be able to get your wrench in there. You'll be able to do it. That's the type of stuff we want to be able to do when we think about our environment. How do we kind of get operations shifted back to the left so that not only do we consider things, but they're easier to support. We know how to support them. We even have some tools maybe developed to be able to support them so that we're able to deliver that value back to the business. Kind of drawing this into an IT example. 
This is a, a use case that we have seen with some of our customers. So, so they go through retail environment. They're like, all right, we got to, we got to figure out how do we get some new customers? We need this new feature and functionality. So we're going to, we're going to develop this rewards program. That's going to help us, you know, with customer retention, customer satisfaction. People are going to come to us instead because they're going to earn all these reward points. They're like, it's going to be great. It's really going to help us. It's going to improve our business. So we roll out all those features and functionality, but then when we get to actually using it, it doesn't work. And so we, we got this feature and functionality, but then we rolled it out and now we're in the, the person's at the store trying to use the reward card and it's not working, it's not scanning, it's not doing those things. So in this case, instead of providing more value to the business, we actually hurt the business. We made it worse because we tried to like, oh, hey, we got this feature and functionality done. We threw it over the fence and said, all right, now you support it in operations. And the business thinks, oh, we now have this, but they're actually seeing the opposite effect of what they want. Because think about it in your own life. If you think, hey, this reward thing is going to work, it's going to be awesome, and you go and you can't use it, now instead of encouraging me to come there and be like, man, I'm not going to go back here. They didn't even get this to work. So we've actually hurt the business because we couldn't support it where the value is actually delivered. Because the value was delivered at the business in the day-to-day -day use of that reward program. It, there was no value in us actually creating it. Yeah, we created it. Yay, that didn't actually improve anything. Where it should have gotten improved was whenever our customers started using it day in and day out. That's where it has to work. And that's some of the things that we're trying to do. You know, So Agile saying, hey, how do we get this built? How do we get it built as quick as possible? How do we make changes along the way so it's actually what we want when we finish? And then DevOps is saying, okay, how do we do this so that it actually works at the end and that we can support it at the end? And all of that, we still kind of look at best practice to see, okay, how should we structure this? How should the, what gates should be there along the way? So again, all of these sort of fit in very well together. This one sort of talks in about service operations. You know, we just kind of talked a little bit about that of, you know, supporting it day in and day out. You know, when we talk about service operations, some of the processes that fall under that uh, is incident management. So incident management, you know, the, the unplanned interruption or degradation in the quality of a service. That means things aren't working. How do we get them back up and running as quick as we can? Request, hey, I need something. Your users need things from you. Your customers need things. How do we get those back to them? All the way to problem management. How do we get to the root cause of things? So as I mentioned, this is where the value is actually seen. So from a customer viewpoint, from a business viewpoint, operations is where the value is actually seen. So if we if we mess up the service operations, we don't actually get any value back to the business. We've actually hurt things along the way. This is directly as we're talking about some of those things. We're talking about that shifting left. You know, as I mentioned, hey, how do we how do we build in the operational concerns from the very beginning? and then validate them as we go through testing and rolling them out. And so not only did we consider it, but we made sure it's actually going to be able to, to be built into the final product. That leads us to, you know, when we talk about all of this really starts when we talk about at the design stage. So at the design stage, this is where this all starts. And so we're then matching this back to ITIL again. So this is what we call the service design lifecycle. So this is where things start. This is where we start answering the question of how. That's right when we should start thinking about how are we going to roll it out? That's transition. How are we going to support it? That's operations. That starts in design. So most of the time, if things aren't going well in transition, things aren't going well in operations, they start back in design. They have their root, uh, root issues back in design. So, you know, match that even to, um, you know, our agile and, and DevOps type things. If you're struggling with agile you know you just can't get it off the ground you keep delivering you're having a lot of issues you're probably not doing a very good job in design of understanding what are your epics what are your user stories what's the definition of done for your user stories are your user stories comprehensive enough to include you know the user perspectives also the infrastructure perspectives you know did we do well back at design there you know, all the way to, you know, DevOps is saying, OK, we're not doing well in operations and rolling things out. we got to look back at design. OK, and design, did we design it where we could have a production like environment or can we quickly spin up a production like environment for our developers to be able to use? Those things start in service design. So kind of mapping this to some of the, the methodologies or the, the, the frameworks here that we've talked about. When we think about design, ITIL refers to this as a service design pack. And that service design package is everything that it takes to deliver a service. Look at Agile. You know, that's where we're going to talk about our epics and our user stories. You know, how what's the main thing the business needs? We start breaking that down on user stories and then we start delivering on those. DevOps talks about how do we shift left? How do we get involved earlier 
both in the Apex user stories from the Agile perspective and how do we get involved in the service design package um, level as well. And then also DevOps needs to be able to provide out, you know, what's, what's our architecture roadmap? What's the underlying technology? What's the underlying architecture that, that, you know, our developers need to know that's going to be there to support them. So they need to be able to provide some of that information so that the other groups can plan for it accordingly. All of this, you need to take into perspective. What type of business are you? Are you, are you the, you know, the, the 30 person shop over on the right? You don't need as much rigor in this. And you think of your service design package, your service design package, maybe one or two pages. If you're a huge multi-million dollar corporation with a lot of, you know, government regulations, then now you're looking more at, hey, you need to have a comprehensive service design package. And, and it all sort of is relative to what you're trying to get done and what your organization is. So when we talk about how these things fit together, they're not all the same size. They're not all the same size. They're not all the same level of rigor, all the same level of, um, you know, implementation. And so that's also where some of the challenges come in and add is because you can't always look at one organization and go, oh, we're going to do exactly what they do. Well, if the, if the huge house on the left starts trying to do exactly what the small house on the right does, it's probably not going to work very well. They're not going to be nimble enough. They're not going to have, you know, the not right kind of stakeholder involvement. So you got to make sure that you approach this based upon what type of organization you are, what size of organization you are, what level of rigor you need or have to have, and really what's important, what does your business need? So it's not just, you know, what can IT do, but what's your business need? So that kind of leads us into some of the challenges that we're going to talk about. So, you know, the challenges, one of the first challenges that happens is if we do this well, we can actually outpace the business. So IT starts cranking through things so fast, they've, they've outpaced the business. So when we talk about doing agile and development, we outpace them so quick that they can't help us maintain the backlog. They can't help us, you know, if we need them to validate and do some user acceptance testing, they can't do those things quick enough. That we've rolled things out in our environment so quick that, that they can't keep up. Or we've rolled out that new feature and functionalities before, you know, marketing was able to even tell any of our customers that it's available, that it's out there. So it is possible that if we suddenly start just doing fantastic at these things, we can outpace our customers. And that will present a lot of challenges um, because you're going to be out of sync. Going back to the idea of, you know, if we do service management, that IT and business alignment, that's going to get us out of alignment. The other thing I love about this picture is great. It's a great picture anyway. So it's a rabbit and a tortoise. Yay. Um, one of the things I love about this is recognize that, hey, if IT becomes the rabbit, comes the, you know, that, then the company is still the tortoise. The company always wins. No matter how fast they're going, no matter how slow they're winning, just like the story goes, the tortoise always wins. Because remember, IT is here to support the business. So, so if we start cranking out through things quicker than the business can handle it, the business is still going to win. They still, we are there to support them. Now we can enable them. We can help them go faster. We can help them along the way. Just know when you start adopting some of these things, you cannot do them in a vacuum. That you cannot do them totally on your own. Your customers have to be along with you and they have to be at the same pace we are. We can be a little bit quicker. So we're kind of challenging them to speed up, but we can't be vastly different like the, the tortoise and the hare here. So that's one of the things to recognize at first is how are we going to stay in the same pace as our business? How do we get them involved? Another challenge is, do you have the proper support structure? We can't we can't build this house on top of sand. So you know you can't build you can't build all these elaborate processes and automation if the the base layer is constantly shifting. If it's constantly moving, every time a wave comes in, things slightly shift. Then you can't do a lot of these things that we're talking about. So when you think about automation, automation only works if it's repeatable. We know it's repeatable. We know it will work every time. We know the environment now. We know if we execute this, we know what it'll be when we after we execute this. All of that has to have some structure in place. So I say that to say if you if you aren't managing changes well right now, you can't just suddenly think, oh, we're going to adopt DevOps and in a week we'll be doing change management fantastic and we'll have all these things in our environment. No, it won't work that way. And often what happens is if you have some of these support structures that aren't properly in place, when you start doing agile, you start doing DevOps and start changing the way you work, it's just going to bring those things to the surface. It's going to bubble them up immediately. They're like, oh, wait, 
we've never talked between development and infrastructure and change management. We've never had these types of discussions. It just sort of just happens. Oh, how are we now going to build this automation we want to build when we don't really know what each side's doing? Those things are going to come up as you go through. So you got to think through what are some of those fundamental support structures that need to be in place so you're not building this house upon sand. The next thing that may happen to you is that IT is not running at the same pace. So you have one group, maybe your, your agile group is cranking thing, your development teams are cranking out through things, but your infrastructure team just hasn't caught up. You know, maybe they have a lot of you know, technical debt that's holding them back, that they can't just do things. They're having to do a lot of regular just routine maintenance to maintain some of these systems. So, you know, that, that we're trying to crank through things, but we're not all on the same page. That we're not all in, the, in alignment as far as IT goes. And so, you know, if we think about this, if a lot of this is built on automation, it's built on us collaborating and working well together. If we got one of us that, that isn't going well, one of us isn't running well, then it's going to cause issues, you know, across all of us. And so that's one of the things you need to make sure, okay, not only are we, you know, really one group cranking things out, but are we as a whole able to support this? And it's going to force you more than likely, it's going to force you to look at some of your infrastructure type things. You know, what technical debt are you carrying? How many, how many legacy systems are we maintaining that should just be updated? And you may have to spend some effort at the beginning, kind of getting these things up to a level where you can do some of these more mature processes and mature things around agile and DevOps. The other thing that comes up is everybody tries to do everything at once or groups try and do different things at once. So, you know, you have operations start saying, we need to do ITIL. We need to do, you know, the service desk is going to do ITIL. We're going to do incident management and request. And meanwhile, your development teams are going, oh, that's all operational. We're going to do agile. So all your, all your application developers are like, we're doing agile. We don't really care what's happening over there in ITIL. You know, they do whatever they want. We're going to do agile in our environment. Then maybe you have your infrastructure team going, well, we're going to do DevOps. That's the greatest thing. we got to do this. That's what we're supposed to be doing. So you end up with like these three teams doing stuff. And then, then you always end up with sometimes that team that just does whatever it wants to do. So we got Bob's team up there. They're just doing whatever they want to do. You're like, Bob, what are you doing? Well, I don't know. My team runs this way, and this is the only way my team runs. Well, then you got some team going, well, we don't really want to do all of Agile. You know, there's a lot there. So we're going to do, we're going to do Agile Light. Or... One of the groups will be like, yeah, we're going to do a hybrid DevOps. And you're like, I don't, I don't even know what that means. What is that? What do you mean hybrid DevOps? So, so you end up with each one of your teams trying to adopt different pieces and different parts from these different things without having that overall picture of how does IT deliver value to the business? That's, ultimately, that's what we should be doing. At the end of the day, that's what IT needs to make sure they're doing is delivering value back to the business. To do that, we got to have some sort of plan. What is the plan to be able to do this? That plan needs to map to the business. What does the business need? You know, is the business need that you are in a dynamic, fast-paced environment, maybe retail or something, where we need to very quickly respond to the market, very quickly get new features and functionality out, those be supported, be stable day in and day out, be able to scale to a large number of users, maybe scale back down when there's not a peak time, or... Are you in a heavily regulated environment? So you're more around, okay, what's controlled? We can't allow new things in. I need to know exactly what everything is, where they're at, the configuration levels. I got to be able to audit against all these. What is your business need? Then we map to, okay, what's our plan to use and leverage, you know, the best practice from ITIL to the, the agile DevOps methodologies of how we get work done to map to what that business need is. And again, we can't just sit in the, uh, the basement and assume we know what the business need is. We have to engage them. We have to involve them. Um, you know, as we mentioned, the, the very first uh, challenge you may have is we're different speeds in the business. So we need to make sure we're on the same page. We have a, a comprehensive plan of how are we going to implement these things to deliver the value back to the business. The number one challenge I see with people is sustainment. So we jump on, we, we hear DevOps, and you're like, man, that's awesome. That's all the problems we're having. That's us too. All right, let's start doing DevOps. That'll solve all our problems. And so we do do DevOps. And we're like, ah, oh, well, we're solving problems. Well, maybe that's because we should have done some agile things. Let's start doing some agile things too. Oh, wait, we should also look at ITIL. Let's see what ITIL says for best practice. So you just hop around and start doing all these things, and you don't really sustain them. You don't really get them in your environment. You 
you know, sort of cliche, but it is true. You want these things to become part of your culture. You want them to become the way things get done, the way things work gets done. So just like me buying the treadmill doesn't automatically equal six pack abs. That's what we're talking about here. So, you know, that, that doing ITIL and Agile and DevOps doesn't immediately on day two, all of us go, yay, we solved this IT thing. We're awesome. You know, it doesn't automatically lead to that. It has to be sustained over time and we have to see them through. We can't just bounce around and move from, from methodology to, um, you know, different ways of working. We have to get things ingrained uh, into our culture, into the way that we just do work. If anyone's wondering, that's an actual uh, uh, diagram of my abs as well. So. <laughs> All that running. Uh, since, yeah, all that running. So since we're all virtual, I can make statements like that. You're like, oh, well, yeah, so it's totally true. If you ever meet me in person, you, you, you'll know that that's completely true. So um, so uh, recap. So bad jokes aside, uh, let's recap here. So we talked about that ITIL is really that best practice for getting things done. So as you look at how are these things going to match together, I recommend you start with an understanding of, okay, what is ITIL? Where does it fit into this? What's its best practice? Because it is big picture of, you know, all the way from managing relationships to our customers, to setting expectations with them, to, um, you know, resolving root cause analysis with problem management. So it does give you the big picture of best practice across the board. Then look and go, OK, we kind of understand the best practice. We know what's in our environment. We know what we need to, um, you know, adopt. And then how do we adapt that to our environment? Now, when we talk about adapting, that's when we start looking at, OK, what from does it make sense for us to be an agile shop? Should we look at doing agile? Um, you know, I've, I've actually worked with some customers that when we looked at it, agile didn't make sense in their environment. They were they had very strict contracts in place, you know, that said, hey, you will accomplish X in the next you know eight months. Well, you can't really do agile in that. That's uh, your contract bound. It says you must deliver these things in this time frame. So you can't. You can't keep going back to the customer and being like, well, let's tweak this. What do you want in the backlog? So, you know, that's part of where Agile may not be for every environment. That's understanding your environment, and seeing what it is. DevOps, I would say DevOps, you can, any organization can incorporate at least some of the philosophies there into the, into the work that you do. Because the, the root is that we're trying to get where we can support these things better. So how do we get development and operations working um, more closely together? How do we get operational concerns and, and features and functionalities built in from the very beginning and then test them and validate them along the way? Um, so that one's a, a good one to, to look at and adopt regardless of where you are. So um, your, your speed in which you do things may vary from organization to organization, um, but it still has some core principles that, that make sense for, for really any organization. So with that, we will open the floor up to questions and kind of see what we have here. All right, Andy, thanks uh, for that great presentation. Um, I know that was a lot of information at once. So please, if you have any questions, go ahead and submit them into the chat box and we'll see how many we can get to today. And if we don't get to yours today, and we're, we love it when you guys reach out to us here, email us, tweet at us, call us, however you'd like to do it. All right, Andy, so I guess I'll kick us off with a question. Um, do you have any specific tips for sustainment? Um, you know, you always, it seems to me that um, when you go to implement something new, you always have somebody who's resistant to change. Um, so do you have any specific tips on how to overcome that with regards to agile, idle, DevOps? Yeah, so that's a good question. So, you know, I often tell uh, people that, like, everyone loves change as long as it's everyone else changing. As long as I can keep doing what I want to do and what I do every day, of course, everyone else needs to get better. So um, there is that hurdle to um, how do we actually get these things implemented? Um, one of the, the number one things I recommend is kind of going back to that overall plan. What's the overall plan of how these things fit together? Have that plan in place and communicate it out to your groups. And so that sounds fundamental, but so many places don't do that. They sort of, you know, let operations start doing some ITIL things. Maybe you send a few people to um, foundations training. Meanwhile, they're like, oh, we're also doing Agile. And so they start sending people to Scrum Master class. And then your infrastructure team goes to, you know, the DevOps fundamental class. And then there's no, no overall plan of like, hey, here's how all these things are going to match together. Here's where we are going. And so that seems to be the number one hurdle that, that organizations struggle with. And that's 
they start doing the piecemeal type things. And what you'll see is they do the piecemeal type things of kind of picking things. Then they start buying the tools because they're like, oh, the tools will fix it. So we sent some people to training, let's do some tools. And they never quite get there because they didn't have the overall picture of what's this, what's this match to? What, what's our destination of where we're going? And, you know, destination changes over time because our business changes, but we should still have some plan, some idea of a roadmap of, you know, here's how ITIL is going to fit together. We're going to send this group to foundations training with the outcome of this. We're now going to send this group of people to, you know, agile training because they do this type of work and this is how it fits in to, hey, we're going to start implementing these DevOps type things. Um, this is the group that it impacts. Here's how it fits into this overall plan. So that really that big picture of both defining and communicating it out to your groups. All right. Um, looks like we have a question out here from Terry and Terry is asking us uh, how do you get through the hurdles of giving, getting DevOps teams on board with idle processes? Is there a best way to start adding them into your ticketing system as well? Yeah, so make sure I kind of understand it. So one of the things is just looking at your, your DevOps processes shouldn't widely vary from what your ITIL processes are. You may be doing them faster. You may be doing more of them, but, but let's, let's take the idea of, um, you know, a common DevOps thing we want to be able to do is say, how do I very quickly, um, you know, uh, deploy out an environment for our developer that matches production? Okay. Well, when we look at that, we map that to ITIL, that's a service request. It's a service request that comes in, maybe it has a set number of tasks that get fired off. And so, I guess the recommendation is to start looking and going, okay, where are the areas that we need to tackle first? And most of those are going to fit within, you know, incident and request. It's going to fit within those ITIL processes and then just start unpacking them one at a time. What's, what's the one that's the greatest need? Let's do that, define it out, move it over, kind of work on the next one. Um, also, you kind of can wrap that into um, kind of thinking as we go through this, one of the things that you can do is start getting some of that feedback loop. Depending on your environment, you need some way to get the improvements that operations wants to see back to the people that can make them. So if that's if you're pure ITIL, maybe that's your CSI register. So, hey, here's the things that operations needs. We 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 have all these number of tickets that we escalate to to tier two because we don't have this one access or this one functionality, you know, and you get that back to that team that says, Oh, we can write a script and give them access to it. So, so, but you have to get that feedback loop. And so that's where we talk about amplifying the feedback loops. What's that feedback loop from what's operations need to do their job better. How do you get that back in? And so that can be your CSI register. Um, if you're an agile shop, you do your sprint retro at the end of every one. So how are you capturing and managing your sprint retro? If, if you're not managing in that, you know, centrally, you can use your CSI register to those. All those things feed in your CSI register. But but how do you start creating that feedback loop um, back for them to be able to do it? And, and I know I kind of went across the gambit there. So I guess the direct thing I would do is start with some direct quantifiable things that you can do and build upon those. So sometimes we go in and be like, hey, we need to get DevOps integrated in the ITIL. And you're like, well, I don't. I don't know what that means. Like that, that's so big. I don't even know. I'm looking at the mountain peak going, man, I don't even know what trail to start on. So, so tackle some of your areas of, of greatest need to, to kind of get those early wins in place. And hopefully that kind of answered it. All right. Um, Ann out here has a question for you as well, Andy. Um, and actually I think it's a really good one. This is one I have as well. Um, when your organization is set up for traditional IT how do you shift to support DevOps while you still have to support your existing infrastructure and applications? Yeah, so that's a good point there. So, you know, I, I, well, the way I'm translating that is I'm kind of going back to some of the things I mentioned earlier is you may have some of that technical debt. You may have some of those old legacy systems that you just can't do those things on. Um, so one approach is that that you can look at it and go, OK, that's there. We have to maintain it. Let's figure out what level of effort it takes for that. But we're going to draw the line in the sand here and say that all new things, that all new things that we are working on, we're going to start off and do, you know, the design element of that. We're going to start design and, and really have these groups, you know, intergrained in design and roll that out. So so rather than than fighting that battle that, that you may never win of getting all your legacy, all that old stuff kind of where you can do some of these more advanced things sort of segment those off and just make sure that, hey, we're not we're not going to repeat that anymore. So so we're not going to let that mountain get any taller. We may not be able to climb it, but we're not going to let it get any taller. So we're going to say from here forward, here's all the things that we're going to do. 
and, and I know that was kind of nebulous. So one of the things you might be able to look at is go, okay, what are our top requests coming in? What are our top incidents? What are those things? Which of those can we bite off and start saying, okay, what can we do from a DevOps perspective to help you know, implement these, either getting better environments to begin with or better tools, better automations, you know, what are these top things coming in and start biting those off. And then some of those you may just look at and evaluate and go, okay, we see that that's the top thing, but, but you know, these, I don't know, between our, between our mainframe and this system is always going to be a batch job because to, to do anything better, to make it more of a real time API or something like that, it's going to take, you know, 80 man hours of development to, to even create it. And it's just, we're not going to get the value of it. Well, you document that so that, that maybe that goes on your CSI register again and just marks as, you know, on hold or denied or something. So the reason I recommend going and document is so it doesn't come up again six months later and you have the same analysis again. So capture that somewhere somehow so that you don't keep having the same discussions over again. But, but, but basically draw the line in the sand and say, okay, from here forward, all new things are going to work this way. Right. Um, looks like our next question is from Cameron, um, and Cameron's asking, "What would be a good indicator of a project not being suited for agile, or and or suited for DevOps?" So, not suited for agile. Um, if you have really tight or really restrictive requirements, uh, I'll give you an example of one we worked with with uh, that, that did not fit well with agile. Um, their company model, I'll make sure I don't use the company, their company model was they brought um, equipment out, telecommunications equipment, and even to a certain degree, some some um, like construction equipment out to remote locations. And so they had to schedule those out months in advance that like, hey, you're getting this receiver, this, this type of satellite dish, all these types of things. They had to have that identified, you know, three months to be able to even get the logistics of the shipping worked out. You, that's not an agile type thing. That's not a, hey, how do we break that down into a smaller chunk? How do we go back to the customer and ask them, oh, is this really what you wanted? Well, it doesn't matter. You you, you bought this and it, it takes three months to get it on location. So so in that case, it just it just didn't make sense. So so if you are very rigid in, you know, the requirements you have to deliver um, and, you know, contractually bound, that's probably the way to really put it. If you're really contractually bound, that's probably the, the areas that may make it more difficult. Um, it, you, if you're in the, you know, the federal um, consulting side of things, you probably see that a lot that they, they'll put a lot of things on there that like, hey, we want to be agile. But then you read the requirements and they're very much not agile. They're very much around you must do the following things. So it's hard to do um, to do pure agile in that one. Now, now you can still adopt some of the agile concepts. Um, that's actually what we do on a lot of our engagements is we're, we're contractually bound to deliver something, but we still do, you know, as much agile as we can in there. We do regular reviews with them. We break our work down in the sprint so that, that we're, we're having those conversations with our customers. But, but often what happens where it's a pure, pure agile environment, we would meet, we do a, a review and our customers say, Oh, Hey, well that looked good, but I really wanted to do X instead. If it's pure agile, it'd be like, oh, okay, so you want it to do X. Is that more important than everything else? Yeah, it is. Okay, well, that goes in the next sprint. Where we are bound often by contract, we say, okay, that's great. We're going to deliver what you asked for because that's what's in the contract, but we're going to document all these things as an enhancement. And so now that enhancement can be part of the next contract. It can be part of that next engagement with them. So, again, it's less than ideal, but you're still improving your – you're improving your process. You're improving your delivery by adopting what you can within that environment. So um, very long winded way of saying if you're very contractually bound, uh, that's where you may not have the flexibility to adopt some of the um, agile type um, methodologies. And you, you, especially that that constant, um, you know, backlog grooming and picking between sprints and that sort of stuff. So you, you can still do some of the methodology, but you can't do uh, you couldn't do it in a pure sense. And Cameron, if you have any other specific questions about this particular project you're working on, that's something we'd be happy to get on a call about and then walk through with you. Yep. Yeah. And uh, uh, tying it in the DevOps one, like I was saying, there's there's no real downside that to, to go ahead and working some of those things in as much as you can. So you're because in, in the purest view, we are trying to improve things within operations. We're getting involved earlier. We're doing that shift left. We're, we're doing all those things because... 
the business gets the value in operation. So we're doing everything possible to make that go as smooth as, as smooth as you can. So even if you're contractually bound, just imagine we're going to make this as smooth as we can. So some of those principles are good to adopt regardless of what you have in your environment or, or how you may be structured. All right, I think that's about it for our question and answer time. Um, if we didn't get to your question today, also, you know, I know personally, I always think of my questions 10, 15 minutes after the fact. Um, we'll show you our contact information here in just a moment. You guys can reach out to us with anything else you'd like explained. Yeah, so, you know, a few things we do that can that can help you out is we, we are uh, ITIL accredited training organization, so we have the foundations course if that's uh, of interest to you. We also are a certified scrum master, so we can offer you that, um, as well as a DevOps fundamental course. Um, we also uh, have a DevOps simulation, which is just a lot of fun. So not only can you learn DevOps concepts and principles, but you have a lot of fun doing it. So that's a really that's a really fun one. That's one of those I enjoy doing. I, mm -hmm. I may have as much fun as you all whenever we actually do this. So. <laughs> Um, as Taylor mentioned, here's our contact information. Uh, you can send anything to info at beyond20.com. Uh, we are very active on social media, so feel free to reach out to us through any of those mediums. Um, and I think with that, uh, we will wrap it up. So thank you for joining us today. We appreciate you taking time. And uh, as Taylor mentioned, if you have any questions, comments, or anything, feel free to reach out to us. Um, but uh, thank you for your time. Yeah, thanks, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.